Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show, presented by the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, on News Radio, Wham 1180. The Seniors Rock Show, a lively weekly discussion, shedding a bright light on aging with fun, entertainment, and important info for all adults. Join in with your comments or questions. Call or text 222-1180 or 1-800-295-1180. Now from the News Radio Wham 1180 studio in downtown Rochester, here's your host, Joanna Palvino. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Seniors Rock Show. Yes, I am Joanna, and I'm your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Attorney Michael Robinson. I'd like to thank you, first of all, for joining us today. We're here every Saturday from noon till 1, and uh, we have different topics and different guests. And today, I'm going to start out with a quote. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I have this on my bulletin board in my office. And it says, and it's a quote from George Burns, and he once said, young, old, just words. And in preparing for today's show, I was thinking about how words affect all of us. And they can be written, they can be spoken, they can be sung. And in fact, today is National Handwriting Day. And, uh, you know, we have all these crazy national days, and that just happens to be today. So words can inspire and uh, words can hurt. Uh, Words, I thought, you know, they can describe and measure And they actually can define who we are. Uh, Surnames, nicknames, maiden names, they're all words. And they uh, can define us like beautiful, short, tall. The meaning of words uh, can change. And I was realizing that some of the new words that I'm learning uh, can become commonplace pretty quickly. And uh, some words are unspeakable. I... Joanna, like warm words, like hope and unity, common ground and coming together. And that's what we try to do here on the show. We heard a lot of these words this past week. And um, on Inauguration Day, who can forget the inspirational words of a young poet that brought back, uh, brought the country to tears, basically, and to their knees. She did a beautiful job. Today, we're going to have a good talk using our words with guest Jeannie Gainsberg. She's an author, and she wrote a book called The Savvy Ally. It's a guide for becoming a skilled LGBTQ plus advocate. So if you're not sure what all those letters mean, or if you're afraid you might use some words or say something to offend someone, stay tuned, because she'll give you some permission to just try and you're going to laugh too. So I hope you'll stay with us. But right now we are going to catch up with my co-host. He's a rock star estate planning and elder law attorney, Michael Robinson. And right now I'm going to say, hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, Joanna. Happy Saturday. Thank you. Same to you. Winter is upon us. And, and you know, just I was reminded, uh, speaking of words, I would want to put a few words out Um to the families of the three guardsmen who uh, who were killed this past week. And, you know, I think oftentimes we don't think about the sacrifices the people in service are making. We think that when they're deployed, they're in danger. Mm-hmm. But, you know, training takes a lot of lives. Uh, my, my son, who's a Marine, he's seen a number of casualties, and almost all of them have been training accidents, not combat casualties. So, so, uh, so my heart... My, yeah, my heart really does does go out to those to those families. Same um, here. And, you know, it reminds me that, you know, freedom isn't free. So thank you for bringing that up. And especially at the beginning of the show. Yeah. And, and you know, in words, as you said, words are powerful. They can make mm-hmm. us laugh. They can make us cry. Uh, they inspire us. Uh, they can hurt us. They can transport us. You know, think of Shakespeare, Maya Angelou, Robert Hunter. Um, so, it, you know, I think often, too, we forget the impact our words can have on others, but we all can think of times when someone's words have affected us, positively or negatively. Could be a teacher, a coach, a parent, a partner. You know, I, for one, can think of many times I wish I could take back things I have said. And I also can think of many times when my well-chosen words uplifted someone and, and me as well in the process. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and of course, words 
they are our primary tool of day-to-day -day communication. And if everyone is not on the same page as to what certain words mean, misunderstandings can occur. And that brings me to this week's myth of estate planning. And that myth is that people think it's too late to protect assets if someone is already in a nursing home. But the truth is, it's almost never too late to protect assets. And this is a particular concerning myth because it causes way too many people to go broke unnecessarily. And it, it's an all too common myth, even among attorneys. And, and I know where it comes from. The myth stems from a misunderstanding of what is meant by the Medicaid look back period. Many people are aware that there is a five year look back period for asset transfers when it comes to Medicaid eligibility. But many people think that the five year look back period means a five year waiting period. And that if you haven't done asset transfer planning at least five years ahead of time, you can't protect anything. But that is not what the five year look back means. The five year look back is simply a window of time within which the Medicaid agency wants to know if you're applying for Medicaid, what have you given away in the last five years? Uh, and depending on the value of what you transfer and importantly, how you make the transfer, there can be a waiting period imposed before a person becomes eligible for Medicaid. And when done improperly, the transfers can actually cause a waiting period longer than five years. But when done correctly as part of a, a careful strategy, that period can be much less than five years. And in fact, Joanna, we're typically able to protect at least 65% of a person's assets even if they already are in the nursing home. And very often we're protecting nearly 100% of those assets. Um, in fact, we recently you know, had someone come to the office whose husband was in a nursing home already and she'd been paying for several months. Um, and uh, we sat down with her, determined what needed to be done. And by the first day of the following month, he was eligible for Medicaid. And, and so that's why it's so important for folks to consult with an experienced elder law attorney when they're facing a long term care situation, because these kinds of misunderstandings can cost a family everything they've worked a lifetime to build. Agreed. And uh, those costs can uh, go up quickly in a nursing home. I know this, uh, you know, we're, uh, Mike and I both belong to the Greater Rush Area Partnership for the Elderly, so we're quite familiar with the cost of community, our, our community's uh, adult and, uh, uh, you know, assisted living and all the other types of, of senior living, but uh, nursing homes are very expensive. And, and Mike, that's a great thing that you do for families because those are large percentages that you talked about in saving their money. And I don't know, uh, you know, how else you could do it on your own without having someone like you to guide them. And it, it you know, as I, I often tell people, it's one of the saddest things we see in the office is when someone comes in after they already have spent down everything they have essentially and and invariably the reason is because they just didn't know that they could do something different yeah i've heard that so many times it's a myth for sure and thank you for breaking that one that's a good thing that you do every week and uh you know these are just things commonplace things one person says it to another and off it goes you know it's like that old game of uh, gossip we used to play when we sat in a circle and said one thing and you got to the other side and it was a completely different story. So, uh, yeah, you do need uh, someone like Mike and his uh, firm. And even, you know, if you don't even want to call him, go to the website. There's a lot of great information there at mrobinsonlaw.com. And uh, it's uh, always great to hear your perspective because sometimes I myself, you know, even having gone on the site, still uh, need a little clarification and you keep up with things. So that's cool, too. We do our we do our best. And, you know, again, just to remind folks, the webinars that we present, they're free, a lot of good information there. And I certainly encourage people to take advantage of that. 
Mm -hmm. That's how I met Mike. I went to uh, when we actually could go in person and have cookies. Uh, I went to uh, one of his seminars, I guess you'd call it back then. And uh, it was very enlightening. It was fun, which surprised me because I didn't think, you know, estate planning could actually uh, be fun. But <laughs> they make it that way. You do. It's fun. And uh, and also you learn a lot. So uh, go on the webinars because you'll get the same thing. Right, Mike? It's the same as it was in the seminars, correct? It, exactly. Minus the cookies. <laughs> All right. And uh, we're going to be going to break in a few minutes, but I hope people will stick around. Um, now, before I go, though, I should ask you, are you finished with that particular myth or did you have any other comments before I talk about the uh, next? Nope, guest? I am done. OK, <laughs> you look pretty cozy over there. He's got a hat on. It's not the Bill's hat, though. I'm a little disappointed, I got to say. I'll put that on tomorrow. OK, all right. That's, good. A, that's a game day hat. Yeah, well, it's cold today, so I see why you're wearing that one. It is indeed. <laughs> anyway, it's getting chilly down here, too. But anyway, it's great to uh, be on the air with you. And coming up after the break, we are going to be joined by a local Pittsburgh New York woman who has, uh, she was inspired by Susan B. Anthony. And uh, she was really interested and went ahead and did this. She created a more equitable, safe, and inclusive world uh, for a group of people that we're going to talk about and uh, a community that's so important. And um, Jeannie Gainsbourg is up next on the Seniors Rock Radio Show on News Radio, Wham 1180. For over 34 years, the Law Office of Michael Robinson, P.C. has helped families protect their hard-earned wealth from nursing home expense, probate, and taxes. Visit us online to register for our free educational webinar to learn how you can protect you and your family. mrobinsonlaw.com Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm attorney Michael Robinson here with host Joanna Belvino. And uh, Pam, thank you for that uh, for that music. Certainly cold and snow is what we're experiencing uh, last night and today. And Joanna, I know we're going to be talking about what is an ally. And the word ally actually originated in war. Um, allies are friends, such as friendly nations that you can trust. Allies are on your side. An ally is often used now to describe a person who is not a member of a marginalized or mistreated group, but who expresses or gives support to that group. Allies are important to all communities, not speaking for them, but supporting the community and educating others. And of course, a good example is uh, one of our sponsors, the Great Organization, uh, allies for aging adults and their families. That is true, Mike. Thank you. And Jeannie Gainsburg, our guest today, is definitely an active ally. And she is a very smart ally, too. Her credentials are pretty impressive, impressive and uh, they include studies at the prestigious Brown University. So uh, I got interested in Jeannie's story when I read about her book. It's The Savvy Ally, ally I, whoops, sorry, Ally, a guide for becoming a skilled LGBTQ plus advocate. I thought it was a really good story, and I immediately wanted to share it with our listeners. So she is with us today, and uh, the book she wrote is considered vital reading for anyone who wants to relate better in today, today's society. I did, and I've asked her some questions, and I'll ask her today. And um, these things uh, that we'll talk about, or especially in her book, is really, it's a guide, and it's helpful for for people like teachers who are working with students who might be, uh, you know, trans or gay, uh, counselors, social workers, health care providers, uh, you know, people like college professors and parents, of course. There's a lot of parents out there that want to be supportive. You know, they might have a child. Um, they're supporting or a relative or just a friend that has, uh, you know, someone that they care, care about. Um, so, uh, sometimes they just don't know how. So I'm very pleased now to welcome Jeannie Gainsburg here to the Seniors Rock Show to help us to understand how to support people um, in that community. And uh, Jeannie, say hello, will you? Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm <laughs> How's it going today? 
It's, it's going well, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Oh, you, you deserve it, and it's quite impressive, and uh, your story is very interesting, and, and that's uh, what I want you to tell our listeners about today. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about how I got involved as an active ally. Um, I, I did a big old nothing for um, 40 years of my life, to be honest, uh, for, <laughs> to be vulnerable and honest. Um, basically, I, I have felt strongly about LGBTQ plus inclusion my whole life, but never did anything about it. Um, I didn't have any members in, of my family who identified in that way and um, really no close friends growing up uh, who identified as LGBTQ plus either. And I didn't even know the word ally. I didn't know there was a role for me or any of those things. And then um, you know, I sort of started learning about marriage equality in the news around the early 2000s. And then for my 40th birthday, my husband gave me a book called Not For Ourselves Alone, uh, which is about the women's suffragette movement. And I'm reading this book in bed one night, and I'm thinking about, like, oh, if I had lived back then, I know I would have been, you know, <laughs> actively involved in the fight for women's, you know, vote. And um, it yeah. certainly hit me that I was just being so incredibly hypocritical because, you know, LGBTQ plus inclusion has been important to me, and I really hadn't done a thing about it. So um, the next morning, I looked up the word gay in the phone book, if anyone remembers that old thing. That I was going to say, you said a phone book. Yeah, we might have to fill in the younger uh, uh, listeners there, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, 2003, still using the phone book. I um, looked up the word gay, and at the time, our local LGBTQ plus center here in Rochester was called the Gay Alliance. And so I was able to find it very easily, and I called in, asked if I could volunteer, and uh, that was 2003. I ended up volunteering for two years, and then they hired me um, about two years years into my work there. And I, in total, I worked for that agency for 15 years. Um, the, the whole time I was in charge of their educational programming. And then my final five years, I was the education director. So by the time I left that job, I was feeling pretty, um, you know, well able to write a guidebook on how allies could, you know, what kind of the stuff that I wanted when I first started, like, I didn't know what to say. And I was just so worried I was going to mess up. And I did. And, you know, I wanted someone to tell me, like, what to say, what not to say. And, you know, what, what can I actually do? What are some action pieces? And so um, I felt like I should just write the book that I wanted when I started. And it, yeah, it's very helpful. I'm reading it now. I didn't get through the whole thing yet, I'll be honest, but um, it's very helpful. And there's a lot of uh, good, uh, you know, references and so on. And I agree, since we didn't grow up learning about this stuff. I mean, I never heard the word gay when I was in, in school, um, yeah. you know, except for someone saying that someone was happy. So um, I think it's common for folks to worry, um, you know, especially uh, my age group and uh, you know, that we're going to mess up. And then that's what I said to you. I said, you know, it happened to me a few times in the last year that I, uh, you know, specifically remembered feeling awkward and feeling terrible that I might have hurt someone's feelings um, by not realizing what I was saying. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I never want to be offensive. That's, you know, it's always accidental. So I'm sure it happens to a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, there's words that, you know, I'm really feel uncomfortable uh, when I hear them. And it's because they were offensive when we were growing up. For example, uh, the word queer. And now some folks have reclaimed that word. So can you help me to understand a little bit more about, um, you know, uh, how to address those things? And if I do flub up, um, do you have any tips for, you know, suggestions for me or other seniors on how to handle it? Sure. I have, a, I have a lot of tips. Um, <laughs> you do. Basically full of tips. Um, but yes, let me address Let me address the, the start of your question, which had to do with um, being afraid we're going to mess up. And, you know, what I really hope that that doesn't do, although unfortunately I know it does often, is silence people. You know, so we're not having the conversations that we should be having because we're just so afraid that we're going to offend somebody. Um, and I right. really am, like, I really believe that we should be out there having conversations. And, you know, are we going to mess up? Yep. You're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. We're all going to mess up. And we need to get past that. And, you know, basically, I, I often say that being an ally is an ongoing journey of messing up. I mean, you, you mess yeah. up, you make an appropriate apology, which, you know, I talk about in my book. You forgive yourself, not always easy, and then you put in the work to get it right the next time. And then and then you flub again. And that, that's how we learn. And that's how we grow. And, you know, being an ally is an ongoing journey. There's, there's no such thing as the perfect ally. So, you know, I just wanted mm -hmm. to put that out there and say jump in. And, you know, again, my book has some nice tips on how to 
what an appropriate apology looks like, and then also some tips for getting it right the next time. Um, mm-hmm. But you asked about, yeah, and so you asked about some tips. Um, I'm, I'm going to share a few of my favorites. Um, one of my all-time favorites, I call it the switch it technique. Um, I've heard flip it. I've heard all sorts of different things. But it's a really great internal coaching guide that you can use yourself. If you're wondering, you know, is this okay to ask? Is this an okay question? So what I always say is just switch it with a different identity. And, of course, if we're talking talking about the LGBTQ plus communities, we're mostly switching it to refer to a straight person or a cisgender person, which means someone who's not transgender. So an example might be someone wondering, you know, um, you know, should, could I, should I ask my, you know, when my grandchild comes out to me as like a lesbian, is it okay to ask if, you know, I'm worried it might just be a phase. Is it okay to ask her about that? Well, if it's Oh, you know, that's ask, a great question. Know. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to hold on there, Jeannie, and let the listeners know that we are coming back. We are going to break in a few seconds here, but Jeannie will, will be here. If you have questions for her, you can call. We'll give you the number, but uh, stay tuned through the news. Please do. Um, We've got lots more to talk about and more interesting things from Jeannie Gainsbourg. Stay right there. We'll be right back on Seniors Rock Show on News Radio, Wham 1180. Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. Hi, this is Dan Gein, physical therapist and owner of Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. And today I'm bringing you a very important public service announcement. The state of New York is a direct access state, which basically means you do not need a doctor to refer you for physical therapy. You can simply call Genesee Valley Physical Therapy and one of our friendly, knowledgeable receptionists will talk to you and help determine if we can help you feel better with either traditional physical therapy or even wonderful aquatic physical therapy. So please don't suffer in pain and please remember you don't need a referral to see us. We adhere to strict CDC guidelines and even offer telehealth visits if you prefer. Call us or visit GeneseeValleyPT.com today. There's a convenient location near you, including our newest location in Pittsburgh in the Bushnell Basin office building. Do what you love, we'll help you get There are many ways to save energy, reduce your carbon footprint, and increase the comfort of your home. From simple steps like upgrading lighting to properly sealing and insulating, or maybe using a more sustainable energy supply like solar panels. Your home can be more efficient starting with a home energy assessment. Call Wise Home Energy. I did, and I'll be saving money and be more comfortable this winter. Yay, Happy New Year to me. You can save and celebrate too. Call Wise Home Energy at 585 2 2705836 or visit wisehomeenergy.com. Folks tend to dislike it because it was used against them in a, a very hurtful way as they were growing up. Um, and the younger generation in general has um, reclaimed it and embraced it. And so the tip there really to keep in mind is just let's mirror terms that people are using for themselves and their loved ones and then reflect those back. So I always just say use queer with caution and really listen to see if people are using those uh, that word or not. Great tips. That's great. And uh, I'll bring up another thing that I struggle with, and that's pronouns like they and them. And Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to put those words in in places, um, you know, that I've, you know, with in place them in, in places where words are that I've used on my life. For example, I'm saying she, but I have to now say they, um, because, but I know the person looks like a she, so I say she, but then I realize then that I'm told they want to be called they. So it, it just doesn't fit into my sentences. Right. Yeah. And a, a lot of people struggle with that, just so you know. Um, it is new to a lot of folks. Um, one of the things I like to share about singular they is that a lot of us think it's new and we've never used it before. Um, most of us have been using singular they our whole lives. So if you go into a coffee shop and there's a phone on the table, are you really going to say, you know, someone left his or her cell phone. I hope he or she gets it back. You're probably not. You're right. probably going to say, oh, someone left their cell phone. I hope they get it back. So most right. of us have already just been using it in our language and not realizing it. So but then the real trick is how do we use it in relation to a person and remember to use it for their pronoun? Um, I have two tips, and they do actually come from the trans community. These were tips that, that I did not invent. Um, I want to give credit where credit is due. They came from two trans friends of mine, and they have two suggestions for you, Joanne. One is to practice on your pet. If you have a pet at home, um, use singular they as their pronoun for a while until you get used to it. Usually pets don't mind as long as you still remember to feed them and scratch them on the head. 
um, unless they're a fish. And then the other one is um, imagine a mouse in the person's pocket. So for a while, you won't need to do this forever, but picture a mouse in the person's pocket. So now when you're saying, oh, they're coming over for dinner, it's easier to use they because you're sort of thinking of two beings. Ah, those are really interesting tips, too, and easy to do. Thank you. I like those. And, uh, I can do them without being embarrassed, which is great, because I have been embarrassed. And uh, I did tell you, you know, one time I mentioned to someone, oh, does, I said, does your husband like hockey? And she said, well, my wife does. And I stammered. I felt bad because uh, I didn't want to offend her. But, you know, I that led me to a conversation with someone else who said, hey, maybe next time you just say thank you, because you don't know what that person went through to tell you that, uh, you know, right. their background. So uh, you're saying the same thing and you're giving us permission not to be perfect. So thank you, Jeannie, for that. And, um, you know, you mentioned older folks. Uh, do you want to tell um, the folks about the Sage group real quick and then give us your contact information because People need to know where to get your book and um, also your website. Sure, yeah. SAGE is a national group um, for uh, LGBTQ plus seniors and their ally friends and family members. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say I don't know the status of the Rochester SAGE group right now because, unfortunately, our local LGBT center that I used to work for has shut its doors. Um, sure. So, But it's, it's worth going online and looking at SAGE National and, um, and maybe finding out, you know, if anything's going on um, for, for LGBTQ plus older adults. Um, yeah, that, so best play, I'm sorry, you asked about my contact information. My website is Savvy Ally Action. I've got a, I've got a website, SavvyAllyAction.com. I've got a YouTube channel, um, and I've got a Facebook page. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope people will, will check my book out. I, I got to talk for 10, 10 minutes today about everything you ever wanted to know about LGBTQ+. And guess what? <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> so I hope and you know what? I, I think, I think Mike book. had a question for you as well. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, M Mike here. Thanks so much for Hi, joining us. So, I, I think probably a number of our listeners may not know what exactly does LGBTQ plus stand for. Of course, I, I didn't either. In my very first training, when I volunteered, I had to ask, uh, raise my hand, and ask. Um, LGBTQ plus stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and the Q can stand for queer or questioning. Um, but the plus, which I include in my book, um, to me means there are so many other identities that are included in this initialism. And the plus in no way is intended to diminish those identities that aren't specifically mentioned, but to really bring awareness around um, all of the amazing identities that exist within this community. And people will actually see it written in different ways. Sometimes you'll just see the LGBT. The full initialism, at least in the Rochester area, is LGBTQIAA2. S, P, P, and growing. So it's, it's a little intimidating. Um, I used to joke about when back when I worked at the Alliance, it was a nonprofit, and we couldn't afford the ink to write it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I could remember them all. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to write it on my hand or something. <laughs> but that's exactly. And, yeah. and Jeannie, who, you know, who is the book appropriate for? I mean, it sounds like a, a fabulous resource. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it really, it really is kind of a, a, a beginner book in a way. My, my target audience is folks who really, you know, as Joanne was saying, didn't learn this stuff in school. They're, they're silenced in the fear, you know, they're fear they're going to say something wrong. I, I really intended it to be a non-academic, easy-to-understand guidebook, um, and, I, and I hope it is. Um, but I also just want to say that it, it is kind of two layers to it, because there's also a second layer for folks who already have a good amount of that content down but aren't sure how to effectively talk with others about the topic. So there's that effective educator component in there as well. Excellent. Now I have one last question for you. If it's obvious and, you know, obvious that someone is uh, cisgender, which means they are what they were born, uh, you know, as, uh, why do you have to share your pronouns? I'm just, just curious about that. Why, why That's do you think a great they question. have to? Yeah, so I so people don't misgender me when they see me. They they look at me, they think I'm a woman, they use she, and that's correct. I still share my pronouns, and the reason that I do that is partly because it normalizes the practice for others, making it easier for them to do so. So it's, it's it, you know we we avoid those um, really awkward moments when we're just singling out that one person and we're not quite sure what their pronouns are. If we're all sharing our pronouns, it really normalizes it, and it it, it doesn't it doesn't single out that person. Um, so you. Know, we're going to nail it every time, basically, if everyone were to share their pronouns. Um, the only other thing I want to state about you know, sharing pronouns is if we 
only leave it to folks who are transgender to share their pronouns, it, it kind of creates a dangerous situation because the reality is, unfortunately, there is a lot of violence against trans people. Um, and, you know, to have them be the only ones displaying their pronouns can actually be uh, a dangerous situation. Well, that's a very caring thing to say and to and, uh, and to, to teach us because, uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought of that, but uh, that's very interesting. And I thank you so much for your work, Jeannie, in the community and for all you do. You uh, deserve all of the awards that you've gotten for working in the community. And I'm going to tell you one more time, tell them uh, where your book is available. Uh, when we come back, folks, uh, we'll be listening to the grape spotlight so don't go away but Jeannie, tell them one more time on the seniors rock show here on news radio wham 1180 thank you sure it's savvy ally action.com and joanne and mike thank you so much for having me on today it was a pleasure and you have a great rest of your day thanks so much you too the Greater Rochester Area Partnership for the Elderly, or GRAPE, is proud to sponsor the Seniors Rock Radio Show. Since 1992, GRAPE's members, all professionals working with and for older adults and their families, meet for monthly educational and networking programs. The GRAPE organization looks forward to introducing you to some of their members during the Spotlight feature on the Seniors Rock Show. Learn more about GRAPE or join as a member at grapeelder.org or call 585-256-4351. In these uncertain times, we're all concerned with protecting our family's legacy and hard-earned assets from nursing home costs, unnecessary taxes, and the expense and delay of probate. At the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, we've spent over 34 years helping families just like yours preserve their wealth and leave a lasting legacy for those they love. Register for a free educational webinar to learn how you can protect you and your family. mrobinsonlaw.com. That's mrobinsonlaw.com. Pharmacy, they have their medications. They don't know when to take them. Um, they may have confusion filling their um, pillbox. We handle all of that and make sure that when they get their medications, Everything is pre-packed and it's ready to go with for the client. The interesting part of what we do is we do education to ensure the greatest amount of success for our patients. And education can be done on a home visit where I would come into the home. I can do Zoom. I can do FaceTime. Or if I need to, I can call the person up on the phone and we can do the education over the phone. We believe wow, those very, are pretty convenient things. That's great. Go ahead. Um, and, and the nice part is we do everything possible to ensure that the patient is going to be successful with the program. They have someone they can call if there's an issue. Um, if they have any pharmacist questions, there's always a pharmacist available, and we offer free delivery. Typically, we have a delivery driver, and deliveries occur Monday through Friday. Free delivery, that is an excellent point. And, uh, folks, that is Gail Herman with the Medicine Shop Victor New York. How can they get a hold of you, Gail? They can contact me um, at 585 585- Three three seven four three zero zero, or they can email me at gail g a i l at the medicine shop farm p h a r m dot com. And is there a website? Yeah, the website is medicine shop farm dot com. Well, okay. thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Gail. Thanks so much. And uh, Gail Herman at the Medicine Shop in Victor, New York, thank you for your work in support of area adults and for being a member of Great. Well, and and you can learn more about Grape and the Medicine Shop at grapeelder.org. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Mike. And uh, as I said, uh, and I say most uh, of our shows, that Mike and I are both, both of our companies are, are members of 
the grape organization and you can learn more at grapebelder.org. Please join us. It's a great community uh, organization and there's uh, I think close to 300 people in it now. So you learn a lot and you have a lot of networking and uh, I'm going to go back to Mike now because it's an exciting weekend and I, I have to ask the bill's prediction. I have to ask if you did get the shrimp and some closing thoughts from you today. I did, in fact, get the shrimp, and uh, I enjoyed them this past week. So thank you to my good friend, Paul Kraft in Indianapolis. Um, I, I, I will predict a Bills win. I have to do that. But I'll tell you, the deeper you get into the playoffs, the tougher the games become. It, sometimes you'll, you'll see a blowout, but I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched. I think we're going to see uh, a close game. Um uh, but I, uh, I'm going to say the Bills pull it out this time. Well, I think you're right, too, because the energy is in the air and it's positive and we're just going to keep rolling off of this week. So uh, tomorrow you'll have your hat on. Uh, your, do you call it a hat? I don't know. I, my husband's always correcting everything I say about football. <laughs> It's a hat. It's a it's cap. a cap. Is it a cap? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, as, as the Marines would say, it's a cover. Oh, see, there you go. I will learn something every week from you because, as I say, you're the smart one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyway, thank you for your prediction. Do you have any thoughts, uh, you know, before we go, uh, before we close for today? Boy, it went by quick. Boy, it really did. Uh, you know, just everyone out there, the first time we've had a whole lot of snow to deal with. So stay safe and be smart on the roads out there. Uh, and as we say every week, uh, be well and be kind. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank our guests today. I'd like to thank you, Mike, and all of our sponsors. And you, of course, our listening friends. And uh, till next week, I'll say go Bills. And come on, say it with me. Seniors, Seniors Rock. Rock. <laughs> See you.